so much, Lord, for allowing us to praise and to worship you. I thank you, Lord, for your wonderful presence, Lord, being here with us. I want to pray, Lord, for each person, each family, Lord, who gave their tithing and offering to you as an act of worship. I want to pray blessings upon them and their families. I want to pray, Lord, for each person here today, Lord, let them completely, Lord, die to their will. And I pray that you'll open up their spiritual ears and eyes and they can see and hear and understand, Lord, your word. I pray for myself, Lord, that I completely die to my will. And I pray, Lord, for an unlimited portion of your anointing power, your spirit to flow through me and upon me. There's someone here, Lord, that needs to be born again or healed or set free or touched in anything, Lord, that you'll help them. I pray, Lord, that you will open our eyes up to your word today, Lord. I pray, Lord, let us all completely die to ourselves and to our will. And I pray, Lord, let your perfect will, Lord, be done here in this place today. We ask all this in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 To have your Bibles, turn to 2 Peter 3. Uh, this is the third message for this teaching. It's probably be the last one. But this is very important that we understand what we're dealing with here. Most Christians do not understand this and do not walk in this. And God's really been putting it real deep in my spirit to make sure you understand this. Because today's going to be going over a, a certain prayer that God wants us to have. Most people don't ever get to this place in their life. So let's kind of look at this. 2 Peter 3 and verse 16 again. This is the foundation. It says, And also all of his epistles, speaking in them of these things, and which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, and they do also other scriptures unto their own destruction. You therefore, beloved, let me just stop right here before I go on. Understand this, if you are unlearned and unstable and don't know who you are in the Lord, you're going to have a hard time in life. You might have a harder time in life even than people of the world. Why is that? Because the folks of the world, their loss is yesterday's news. They have no idea. If you're born again though, and you've tasted Christ the Spirit, the power, the glory of God. You know it's real, but yet you're unstable. You're unlearned. You're not seeking the kingdom of God. You can be really in that position more out of sorts than you can spend in the world because you know what's real. You know what is right. That's what this is talking about here. So look at this. The verse is uh, 17. You therefore, beloved, that's talking to you, seeing you know these things, before, be aware, lest you also being led away with the error of the wicked fall from your own steadfastness. Look at verse 18, this is the key. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. To Him be glory both and now forever. Amen. So how many understand it's God's will for you to grow in His grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? And I don't mean knowledge, guys, of brain knowledge. This is where we get it mixed up. You'll do yourself no good whatsoever by trying to read God's Word and understand it from your natural soul mind and understand it like you're learning math, science, or English. If you try to approach it from that direction, you'll only get what you can get from your own wisdom. That's it. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the hidden manna that's in God's Word here has to be divinely revealed to you, amen, and the understanding and the knowledge and the wisdom and the power that can only come from God. Amen? Amen? Most people don't ever get there. We accept the grace. We know we're in the dispensation of grace right now. We accept the grace for salvation. But God's will is not for you to be saved and that's it. God's will is for you to grow in that grace. And for the last two weeks now, we've laid a foundation and we've showed you to where He has bought and established. He has shed His blood. Hallelujah. He died for you. He arose for you. And remember, grace is imparted unto you. 
But I've pointed out to you the last two weeks, grace, greasy grace is not God's will. And I call greasy grace is, hey, grace, just do whatever you want to do. It doesn't matter. We're under grace. There's no, there's, no matter what you do, that's not God's will. And it's not God's will either to be legalistic either and say, walk this way, talk this way, dress this way, or are you going to lose your salvation and go to hell because you're not doing this and you're not doing that? That's not it either. Both of them are wrong. Okay? God's Word says we're under His grace. If you've been born again or saved, I showed you last week how that goes back to what? Justification. You've been justifying God's eyes. Growing in grace, though, is sanctification. Remember, sanctification in your spirit realm is already done. Period. You have been justified and sanctified in God's eyes spiritually. Period. It's there. But if you do not allow through your free will the spirit of God's grace through His power, what He's already given you, to be imparted into, from your spirit, into your soul, into your flesh. It is not God's will. You will miss the will of God if you don't allow the sanctification process to take place. Let me kind of back up again make sure you understand this. Today, I might take five steps forward. Tomorrow, I might take ten steps back. I might mess up. How about you? But my position in Christ has not changed. I'm still justified. I'm still sanctified. I still belong to Him. My spirit man is still perfect. It's not about what I do. You with me? But the sanctification process will go on throughout your whole life. But today I'm not the same man that I was 10 years ago. And 10 years from now I won't be the same. If, not if, well if God wants it to happen, He's going to give it to me. No. No, it's already been written. It's already given to you. If you don't allow His will over your will, seek first the kingdom of God. Amen. Listen to this now. Thy will be done in the earth as it is in heaven. His will will not be done in your particular life if you don't allow the sanctification process to go through your life. I might be strong in certain areas and weak in others in the sanctification process. But if I really love God, I'm going to be real with God. I'm going to let the Spirit, that's why the Spirit of God's here. The Holy Spirit's job is to what? Comfort you, teach you, to help you, to guide you, right? This is why it's important to understand what this is talking about. Because it is God's will for you to do what here? According to this, to grow in grace, in the knowledge, understanding, we try to teach that here. Some people are dissatisfied with what? Hey, I'm saved. That's good enough. That's not good enough. You will not fulfill God's will that way. Guarantee you won't. The only way you can do God's will is to grow in the grace He's given you. Amen? Now, with saying all that, go over to Colossians 1. We left off last week. This is an actual prayer for you and for me. And it's a sevenfold prayer. And it's very important that we see this because I'm going to point out to some things to you that you've probably seen and heard in churches before in your life and things you've been told. I want to make sure that you get a hold of this, of what's real. This is a seven-fold prayer. Look at Colossians 1 and look at verses 9. It says this, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge, and watch this now, of His will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. This is where God wants you to go. God wants you to know His will and have knowledge and spiritual understanding in your life. And guys, is this, is this easy? No, it's not easy. We're in a sickening, cursed, fallen world system. Look around. Look around at religion. Look around at our churches. Look at our schools. Look at our government. Look around you. It's a sick place to live, is it not? It's getting worse and worse and worse and worse. So when you're around all that garbage and you're sitting here trying to have His holiness live through you 
and you got Satan over here telling you how bad you are at the same time, it's not always easy. But there's, a, there's, there's, a, there's a key to all this, though. Look at this. I love God's Word. Amen? Look at verses 10. That you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. How many here wants to please the Lord? We want to walk worthy of the Lord. Now watch this now. Being fruitful, please underline this, in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Strengthening with all might according to His glorious power unto all patience and longsuffering with joyfulness. Give thanks unto the Father which have made us meet to be partakers to get a hold of this, of the inheritance of the saints in light who have delivered us from the power of darkness and have translated us into the kingdom of His dear Son in whom we have redemption through the blood, even forgiveness of sins. Now, most people, we've all been here, look at this and say, there's no way I can do all that. I'm not even worthy of being saved. Y'all know you've been there. There's times you just really beat yourself up, is it not? There's times you don't feel good about yourself. And there's times when you have peace and joy. Satan knows how to play this little game. Satan cannot stop salvation, but he can stop if he can get to your will. He can, he can stop God's will in your life. And how does he do it? By messing with your free will. Because you've got a free will. And if your free will says, I'm not, I can't, I'm not good enough, no, Lord, I'm not seeking, I'm happy with just going to heaven, that's exactly what you're going to get. And then you sit here and blame God and say, God, why'd you do this? God didn't do anything. God has already made the way. But He cannot make you love Him. He cannot make you be obedient to Him. He cannot make you seek Him. You understand that? And when I say Him, understand the same Him that's in heaven is tied to and is the same Him that died on the cross and it's the same Him that lives inside you now. You've got to understand the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost are as one. And you're not going to separate it and say, well, one loves me and one don't. No, they're all together as one. They all have different purposes and, and meanings of what, what's taking place here. When the Holy Spirit thinks, God knows everything has been thought. Understand God's here for you to fulfill His will into your life if you will allow it. So now let's kind of break this down. I brought this out to you last week <coughs> in this one particular area. The very first part of the prayer is that, that, that they might be filled with a knowledge of His will. And I brought out to you last week different stories and different things that I have been through in my life personally Witchcraft, people praying over me and attacking me and things in churches and, and evil things. I brought up some stories to you last week. And the only way I was able to get out of that attacks and those things in my life was by learning the knowledge and the wisdom of God. Now, during the time while I was going through those things, I did not have the understanding and the knowledge I should have and God allowed me to go through things, and God will allow us to go through things, but he's, he's right here with us. But during the process, when you start understanding who you are in Christ, and you start using the name of Jesus Christ, and the power that He has given you, hallelujah. And if you seek after, I guarantee you, God's going to let the sanctification process take over, and it will come through. And when you start speaking what God wants you to speak, things will change. And you will start seeing miracles and powers and you'll start seeing the spiritual worlds out here y'all understand there's a spiritual world out here that's good and bad okay angels and demons are they're, they're, they're real guys by us ignoring these things it's not going to make them go away okay so you got to understand how important this is so God's will is for you to grow in his spiritual knowledge and wisdom and guess what that requires for you to say Lord I've been raised up in religion or I've been raised up in the world. I've been taught certain traditions and certain things in my life. I give up. Holy Spirit, you teach me the truth. When you finally get to that place, knowing that you don't know everything 
and that God can change you around and be willing for that to happen, then God will pour in the hidden mysteries of His Word into your spirit and your soul. Proverbs 3, verses 5 through 7 says this, Trust in who? The Lord with all thy heart, which means your spirit man, and lean not to thine own understanding, which is your soul. If you, if you take your soul, guys, your natural abilities, your understanding, trying to figure it out. I've been there. Have you not been there? It don't always work out the way you think it's going to work out. Do not lean into your own understanding, it says. What, but, but what does it say do? In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thy, own, in, in thy own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Did you catch that last part? Evil will not depart from you until you depart from it. So again, don't expect sanctification in your life. Don't expect powers and authorities and things to happen in your life if you're playing around with evil. It ain't going to happen. I told you the story last week when I was a teenager and I went out here with my friends watching Friday the 13th evil stuff on, 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 on TV or at, at the movies. And the whole time inside me, the Holy Ghost is saying, what are you doing? What are you going here for? This ain't, this ain't for me. And I sat there for just a few minutes. Then, once in somebody takes over, God takes over and says, don't look at the screen, look at the people. And I'm looking at the people sitting in the place. And all I see was fear on the people. And God said, fear is not for me. Get up and leave. So what do I do? I get up and leave. My friend who was with me said, where are you going? I said, I'm not staying in this garbage. I'm going home. I drove. If you're going to go with me, let's go. He didn't go. I left him. Okay? I've been to these, quote, judgment houses. Y'all been to them, have you not? It's the Christian's version of still playing around in the world. Let's get real with it. Haunted houses are evil. Haunted houses are had to scare you half to death. So Chris said, well, I don't see anything wrong with it. Well, God does. Why does God see something wrong with it? Because you're saved under grace. And God's will is for you to grow in that grace. And as long as you stay in fear, playing with your flesh and your soul, you can't grow in that grace. Because you've been told it's good enough just, just, just to go to heaven. And we thrive on emotions and fear. So what is Christian's version of it is? I told you my stories last week about all the dumbness of the Methodists and the haunted houses and dressed like werewolves and stupid things I was involved with as a kid because I was told by adults it was okay. It's not okay. I've been to churches before, seriously. Walking the door, they don't have caskets everywhere. One wanted to do haunted houses, and I said, no, we're not doing that this year. Well, who do you think you are? I'm the pastor of the church. You either pick that or me, because I'm not going to allow that garbage in this church. And people get mad, ready to kill you, because you're messing with their traditions. Because they've always kind of played around with death, played around with darkness, and called it fun. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Let's get real with it. That's not God's will. Not God's will at all. God's will is for you to grow in the power of His authority in His name and speak against those things. Are y'all getting hold of this, anybody? If you don't do that, you will never get where God wants you to be. In other words, you must depart from evil. Y'all getting hold of this? If you don't depart from evil, it's going to be right there waiting on you. God wants you to have spiritual wisdom and knowledge. And listen to me, that spiritual wisdom and knowledge, knowledge is not how smart you are. I can't stand when people tell me, well, Greg, you're just smarter than I am. No, I'm not. No, 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 no. Everything I've got has been divinely imparted to me by seeking God and His face and His will and His power. If you seek God, He will divinely impart His wisdom and knowledge unto you. And when God, He gives it to you, at that point, you've got to use it. Folks might not like you anymore, but you've got to use it. Amen? 
When I started being attacked the same way, when I started learning how to use that power in his name, oh, I did it. And demons trembled. Devil ran. I was attacked many a times that way. I had preachers, preachers telling me, oh, Brother Greg, don't talk about evil. Don't talk about demons or devil because God loves you. Just be careful what you say. Why? Why be careful? Greater than what's inside you, hallelujah, than what's in the world. Amen. See, until you get that understanding and wisdom and knowledge of who you are in Christ, am I saying I'm perfect in my flesh, not one bent? Am I saying I never mess up? I mess up all the time. But what I do has no bearing on my position in Christ. Has no bearing on who I am in Christ. And the power that's there that's been given to you and the authority that's been given to you. And when you allow that process to go through you, you're not got nothing to do with you. It's about you using His name, His power, His blood and start changing things around you. And if you don't do that, it's not God's fault, it's your fault. You must depart from evil. Amen. But will you? The next part of this prayer shows in Colossians is, is this. That we might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. Do you want to please the Lord seriously? Do you really want to do that? Hebrews eleven six says this. Now watch very carefully what it says. But without faith, it is impossible to please Him. So that means Greg doesn't go out here and read more and pray more and pray harder and do it 12 hours a day. That's got nothing, nothing to do with what he's talking about at all. That's your effort. You're trying to do it. It will fail every time. What's it talking about here? Look at this. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So what's he really saying? Really what he's saying is this right here. Without Jesus Christ, it is impossible to please him because Christ is the author and the finisher of what? That faith. He imparts his faith into you. So if you don't know and understand the knowledge and the wisdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you're not going to understand the faith that's been given to you in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And it's completely impossible to please Papa the Father without being in Christ. Does that make any sense? So don't try to please God by, Oh, Lord, I'm praying more. Oh, Father, Thou. Get, get off that kind of stuff. Be real with God. God already knows the answer and what you're going to ask before you even ask. He already knows your heart anyway. All he's waiting for is for you to give your will over to his and be real with him and watch what happens. When you understand the process that you're the clay, <laughs> okay, he can make you. And as long as you fight back, it will never happen. You'll, you'll actually go to heaven one day because you're saved, but you will not fulfill the will of God. I don't want that for your lives. Be real with God. Look at this. The next part of this prayer it says being fruitful in every good work. Now this is where it gets deep. This is where it gets interesting. I won't have time to bring all this to you, so I'm going to give you some scriptures for you to look at. But being fruitful, it says, in every good work. And being fruitful is not your definition of being fruitful. Okay? You can go out here and buy clothes for the needy and spend tons of money on food and feed somebody and that's not always fruit. It's not the fruit of what you think it means it's even talking about. Now watch, watch this. There's three levels of fruit. And it goes back to fruit is cleansing. Are you allowing God to cleanse the process through your life? I know I'm already perfect in Him spiritually. I'm still to, 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 the, to the day of redemption. I belong to Him. Hallelujah. But am I allowing that cleansing process to go through my soul, my will, and through my flesh? And then it goes into talking about more fruit, which is abiding. Are you abiding in that grace that you were saved in? I know a lot of folks who's not, who's been saved under grace, and they're not abiding 
under his mighty hand. They walk out from his mighty hand and they do their little free will in the world and then they try to go back under it when things go bad. And they roll back out here in the world again and do what they want to do and live in the world because it looks so enticing because Satan makes it look that way. Then when things get in trouble, you run back under God's hand again. Have y'all seen this happen before? You're not abiding. You will not see very much fruit. And then it goes into the next area. It's called much fruit. And that's where you become obedient. Spiritually obedient. That's when it gets kind of hard for you. When all your friends and family and neighbors and people around you are looking at you and we've all been trained a certain way to act and think and talk a certain way and all of a sudden the Holy Ghost tells you in your spirit to take off your shoes or to go run around a building or to go lay hands upon the sick or whatever He tells you to do, will you be obedient to it or not? Think about it. I'm just trying to show you this sanctification process. All this goes back to the law. You say, well, I don't have no law, Greg. That's been fulfilled. Yes and no. You do have a law. It has been fulfilled, hallelujah. That's the law of Moses. And where is that law at now? In your heart and your mind. And because of that, you're under a new law. And it's called the law of who? Christ. The law of Christ. The law of Christ says, under your grace, you're justified. And the law of Christ says, for you to grow in that grace. It's the same thing, okay? Let's take, take all that away. Now you're living here in America, and you go get your driver's license. And you're nervous. And you're learning how to parallel park and stuff. 30 years later, if you're the same driver you was when you turned 16, that's something wrong. You haven't grown very much, have you? You haven't gone through anything, have you? Just get your license and park the car inside the driveway and never drive it, it's kind of stupid. But that's how most Christians are when it comes to their salvation. God wants you to grow in His grace. It is His will for you to do that. And that can only happen when you're under the law of Christ. John 15, 5 says this. I am the vine, you are the branch. Now please watch this. I am the vine, you are the branches, church. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do what? Nothing. Now without him, you can do a whole lot in the natural that looks good to people, that looks good in religion, that plays with your emotions, that feels good on the outside, but there's no spiritual fruit. Because what we always sometimes call fruit is not really fruit. You better hear me on this, guys. This is important. Now you later, please, look at this, John 15, 1 through 26. Read the whole chapter later because I'm not going to go through all that with you now. But let me give you some little, little some advice here on this right here. Remember a tree. You look at this tree and you see the branches the vines, and you see the fruit off the tree. But what you cannot see is the root under the ground that's bearing and holding that tree up. And all the branches, the vine, everything comes from that root, and all the fruit comes off from that. If you're disconnected from that, you'll get no fruit. The church, true church, you and I, are hidden in Christ, which is the root, which goes up to be the vine. The branches, listen to me, you and I are connected to Him. I'm saying this because of this. How many of you have ever worked in your yard and you're painting grass seed, trying to keep everything looking good, flowers, plants, whatever, and all of a sudden here comes kudzu, or here comes some Weeds. The weeds sometimes can, can produce beautiful looking flowers. Popped up. It looks good, don't it? But it really is it's evil. It's weeds. It's not grass. It can even produce fruit. How many have ever seen some weeds produce fruit? Literally. 
I'm sharing this with you because of this. I've watched and heard about people go out here and eat things off of trees and die because it's poison. Understand this. Here's how it works. God plants the wheat here in this dispensation. Church, true church is the wheat. Satan produces and plants what? The tares among the wheat. So now you've gotten weeds and you've gotten tares growing together. You've got the church and the apostate church growing together. If you start compromising with the weeds and you start compromising with evil and darkness and mixing it together and we all come with our own standards of fruit, you're going to miss what he's saying here. The only way fruit can come out is through the sanctification process. The only way you can have fruit of the Spirit moving in your life is when you're connected to it and allowing it. Being real with God. You have to be real with God. Say, God, I know I'm strong in this area right now, but I'm very weak right here in this. I need your help. Be real with God. He already knows that anyway. All he's, all he's waiting for is your permission. He's not going to force it on you. Are you seeking first the kingdom of God? Now, are you all seeing this, anybody? This is what it's talking about. So, how many here wants God to have fruit in your life? I can tell folks by their fruit. Can you tell folks by their fruit? You're not supposed to judge nobody, Greg. You better start judging everybody. That's just evil, no? So you're missing what I'm saying. It's the same way you're missing it when I say, I'm perfect. Well, nobody's perfect. That shows me where you're at, natural or spiritual. Man, just think about it. Nobody's perfect in their flesh. That's stupid to even think that. But if a person don't see themselves as perfect in their spirit, then you're not walking with Christ. Y'all seeing that? Anybody? It's the same process. If I'm sitting here saying, well, I'm not supposed to judge nobody, that's exactly what Satan puts out here through our government, through our schools, through everybody. Why? Because he don't want you judging anything. He wants all evil to be good. It's okay for a man, man to sashay way around as a homosexual. It's okay to have pastors as homosexual. No, it's not okay. Light is light, dark is dark. Good is good, bad is bad. Your opinion doesn't matter. See, my opinion, because the society has changed, does it not change God's word? It does not matter. And if I'm outside of the fruit, outside of sanctification, outside of being connected to Him, they can hear me on this now. It's easy for my soul and my flesh, easy to be transformed by the world and by religion. It's easy for that to happen. Even how we dress, how we comb our hair, how we think is influenced by the world system. Y'all know what I'm talking about. It's real. You sit all the time. The things that I grew up in 20 or 30 years ago is not what, what my kids are growing up in now. But guess what? The same word back then has not changed now. Amen. Are you seeing that? God's word is not going to change to fit us. We have to change to fit the world. Are y'all seeing it? The world, if it don't change over to what God's word says, there's only one place it can go. Anybody seeing this? He says, number four, he wants us to be strengthened with all might according to his glorious power. How many of you ever, ever feel weak sometimes? In the Greek, hear me on this now, in the Greek, this word power there in Colossians, this is the fourth part, it's showing us here, it's called dunamis. Dunamis, which is miraculous power. In the English, it's translated as what? Dynamite. Dynamite. You've got dynamite, miraculous power inside you right now. You say, well, why don't we ever see it? You. I know that hurts. I'm going to raise my first hand. First one to raise my hand. Why don't we ever see God's miracles and powers? You. Hey, it's not God. It's not God at all. God's not sitting there saying, well, when you get ready to pray more and do more, and I'm going to twist my, then I'm going to send, no, no, no. God don't send power down and the greatness of God down because of your 
twisting him to do something. No. It's because you're not allowing his will to flow through your life. It could be fear. Hey, we all have some type of fear that we'll allow Satan to move in our lives when we shouldn't. There have been times in my life, I remember one time years ago, back in Rock, Rockmore area, I was called to a church, or to a woman's house from this church. And she was dying. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, go over to, the, go over to her bedside with all the folks inside this room, Take her hand and say these words. He said, in the name of Jesus Christ, stand up. That's what he, that's what he told, told me to say. So here's what I did. I was like, God, now what, what, if, what if she don't? What are they going to think? I'm new in this town. I'll never forget this. I went over there, took everybody's hand. I said, y'all believe that God could bring her life? You think God could heal? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I said, God, if it be your will... It's like what I said. If it be your will, then you. What I did was I was throwing it back on him in case it didn't work. And she died. She died. Why well, beat myself up? And God said, you have no control over her death. I'm just showing you something. If you would have been obedient to what I said, I would have her jump up out of that bed. That's what God spoke to me. I was not at the place at that time in that area of my life where I needed to be. But the dynamite, the power had not changed. It's the same today as it was then. The difference was the sanctification process. I was not allowing it to go through me. Why? Because of fear. Fear. What if? When you finally get to a place in your life about all the what ifs, I don't care anymore. I really don't, I get, I get, don't care if you like me or don't like me. I don't care if you approve of me or don't approve of me. When you finally get to that place in life where you care about what, what, what God thinks, He can use you. But as long as you have fear of peer pressure, peer, fear of losing a job, fear of what well, folks think about you, how you look in school, whatever, then you're not, you're not where you, 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 you can be used yet. Because the sanctification process is still working. Ephesians 3.16 says this. That we would grant you according to the riches of His glory to be strengthened with the might by His Spirit in the inner man. Your inner man is your spirit. God wants His strength, His power to be going through you. Ephesians 6.10 says this. Finally, my brethren... Be strong in the Lord and in the power of what? His might. Not yours. When you finally let this process go through you, things will change. Number five, the fifth part of the prayer is this, and this is one that really has been hard for me, and I'm sure it's not for you, but it was for me. Patience, long-suffering with joyfulness. Oh, thank you, Lord, for me losing my job. Thank you, Lord, that I'm sick. Thank you, Lord, that I, I don't have anything. Really, that's really hard to be thankful. Can just get real with it? That was the hardest part of, that, of this prayer I had to learn to go through. But I'm telling you right now, when you go through this, these are wonderful qualities <laughs> that we're all in need of. Why? Because this is very foreign to our nature. Our nature is not to give God praise in the middle of your pain. That's not, that's not nature. That's not normal. So just think about it now. It's the same thing to me saying, put your hand on a hot stove. How does it feel? It feels wonderful. It feels great. You're actually having to speak against what you're feeling. Just think about that. It don't feel great. So how can you speak against how you're feeling? See, this is where God's, this is where this process comes through. But I promise you it works. When you get to a point to where you count it worthy to suffer for His name, things change. That's why I said a year earlier, I want, I want everybody to like me. I really do. I want everybody to love me. But if you don't, I'm going to sleep like a baby tonight. 
Not saying that I'm perfect in my flesh. Not saying that you are. Not saying that, that you're not going to mess up. You will. I've messed up many times in my life, especially in ministry. I've done stupid things and said stupid things I thought was right that wasn't right. There's times in my life when I got behind a pulpit to preach and not meaning to would preach in my flesh in certain areas of the message. And God, 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 God had, to, had to convict me of it and show me this, this is wrong. You can't do this. There was times to where I'd spend hours and weeks in the Spirit, hearing from God, getting a word, getting a message, and get up here to preach it, and boom, nothing. Like, why, God? What's going on? Because he said, you're trying to preach with the same power and authority that I gave it to you with, and that was for you personally. When you get up to preach the word, it's the same Spirit, but you've got to have faith for the fresh anointing to flow the word. It's not about what you know. It's about what you'll allow the word to flow through you. Because what you've already known in the spirit realm, if I get up here trying to give it to you exactly the way God gave it to me, then I'm stopping the Holy Spirit from flowing and he might change his mind and do something different. Have you been there? Anybody? Any preachers? So you got to understand, God wants this in your life, but listen, Learn how to be grateful and joyous and thankful in everything you go through. Is it easy? Not at all. Not at all. But listen to me. Tomorrow, something bad or good can happen to us. Is it what happens to you? Will that change how you think in God? Think about that. If, 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 if it does, then something's missing in your relationship. If what happens to you can change your position in Christ of who you are in Him and how you think about Him, God hasn't moved. But if you move, then you're not allowing the sanctification process to take place. Does that make any sense? Amen. So patience and long-suffering, He can bring joy. That's part of the fruit of the Spirit. You'll learn how when folks talk about you, I bless them, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Watch what happens. When you start blessing someone who's, who's coming against you, man, you've got it in God's hands now. It's not, it's not about you. And you'll start saying things around you change. Things happen. You're thinking, hmm. You watch it happen. You just watch it. Hey, don't say, don't say a word. Because it's not about you. It's His will. Look at Psalms 35 now, what it says. And my soul shall be joyful in the Lord. It shall rejoice in His salvation. What does it say is going to rejoice? Your what? Soul. That's your free will. Because your spirit's perfect. Okay? Your soul is going to be your free will. I choose whether I'm going to walk in his salvation and be joyous or not. Psalm 63, 5. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my youth shall praise thee joyful. Joyful lips. Number six, we're almost done. What does it say do here in Colossians? The sixth part of the prayer says this, giving thanks unto the Father to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Now this is huge. I wish I had more time to go over this with you. But understand this. The sanctification process enables or qualifies you to be a partaker of the light. Who is the light? Christ, not darkness. In other words, if you will go through this process, you'll can it joy when the world don't like you. You'll can it joy when you don't add up with religion. When religion, a man says, well, you're crazy. It's okay, you praise the Lord anyway. You're in Christ you have joy. You're in light, not darkness. Here, it's important to know this because I promise you this. Acts 20 32 says this. And now, brethren, now listen very carefully to this one verse. We're almost done. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. Sanctification here. And to give you an inheritance among all them which are what? Sanctified. 
you're sanctified in your spirit, man, will you allow it to go through your soul and flesh for God's will to be done? Last part that it brings out here is he has, listen, he has delivered us from the power of darkness. He has translated us unto the kingdom of God. You have been what? Redeemed, it says. Now here's the, here's the thing that's important to know this in closing. I have been, I have been delivered from the power of darkness. So when I, years ago, was attacked by Satan and demons and sickness and disease and all this kind of stuff, when that, when that revelation finally came through the sanctification process and I understood it, at that point is when I was able to stand up against it. And that's when it broke. It wasn't God doing it to me. It was Satan doing it to me. And I had to take the authority and power to speak against it, and it had to, it had to, it had to leave. Okay? So here's a, here's a bottom line in, 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 inside closing. You have been delivered from what? Darkness, sickness, the lead. The, the power of Satan is stronger than what you can ever imagine in your flesh. But the power of God is even greater in your spirit. Now this is one thing, but it can only manifest over the power of darkness if you allow it to. That's why we have sicknesses and diseases and things we have. Why? What system is in this world right now? It's Satan's world system. It's cursed. It's darkness. I'm in the world, but I'm not of this world. I'm of a, I'm of a different kingdom here. The kingdom of God. Hallelujah. It's light. It's Christ. So I'm in the world. And watch this now. I have a soul and I have flesh. His power is greater than Satan's power. But it cannot forcefully go through you without your free will allowing the process, allowing the name, allowing the blood, the power to go through you to see the manifestation of the healing and the deliverance or whatever you're needing in life. And that's what I went through many years ago. I was saying, God, I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't understand. I was praying out to God, why, why, why? And I knew I loved God and He loved me. But listen to this. When the understanding came from spirit to my soul, enough is enough. I'm sick of this mess. I'm God's child. I don't have to live this way. I don't think so. You get bold and starts rising up inside you. Now you're ready to take control. Because the power, listen, the problem is not in my spirit. The problem is Satan can't attack my spirit. He's attacking my soul and my flesh. He did years ago to me. When I finally stood up, remember I told you about all the frogs? Steve can verify that he, he saw them. Frogs all over the farm we used to live on, everywhere. That was a, that was a curse. Not from God. Because maybe you can even read, read, read the same thing in here in the Old Testament. But as soon as, as soon as I allowed that process, the power of God's grace, they go from spirit realm into my soul. All the sickness, all the disease, all the evil, when I spoke in the name of Jesus Christ, had to be gone. Just like that, boom. And God said, now get up and go. Go back to that same place. Now folks around were saying, no, I wouldn't go back there. But God said, go. And I told you, when I pulled back up in that driveway, all the frogs, hundreds of them, were on their backs, dried up to the bone, it was crunching over them as it was driving up. And there was three white doves on the front porch that flew up, which assembled the Holy Spirit. Now, I cannot sit back and just sit here and say, okay, God, whatever happens, happens. No. Go back and look at Job. Read everything in the Bible. You'll see it. When you allow your free will over to the spirit realm, then God's power that is greater will manifest over darkness. It will not, though, in your personal life without you allowing it to happen. That's the bottom line. 
So here's the last question for you. Will you allow the sanctification process to happen in your life? Because you know about grace. You know, I mean, I know you love God, and you know he, he's, it's by His grace you're saved. Hallelujah. But will you allow that same grace to help you grow in grace? Will you allow that same grace to change your life to where you're not going to be afraid to go through stuff? Because when you, he's, he's going to be right here with you the whole time. And if somebody would have taught me this before I went through it, it wouldn't have lasted nowhere near as long. I wouldn't have taught anything. I had to learn on my own. What do you think I'm here for now? When I, when I first come to this church 12 plus years ago, kids can verify this, we still have the same old van. The old van, we had 99 van. We got in the car to come here to preach. Last door, I'm going to close. We came, was driving here to preach for the pulpit committee and the church and everybody. And as we pulled out of our driveway in Civil Creek to drive here, coming here to church, a dove, a white dove, flew up and started flying with us here. And as we got closer in, the, the, the dove started flying around the van as we're driving. Ran in a circle, ran in a circle, ran in, it was literally flying around it real close, and the kids just watching it. And I knew it was a sign from God. So they'll pull up inside the driveway here, then pff, the dove flew off. Now all that was was a God reminding me, hey, I've opened up doors to send you here for a purpose. And I knew it was going to be easy. It was a, then, that, then I said, okay, God, I don't want to be here. I already know what I have to go through. I don't want to be here. I know what it's going to be like because this is not going to be easy. And I remember saying, God, if it's your will, then I have to get at least 97 or 98% of the vote or I will not go to that church. I was looking for every excuse not, not to come here. And I remember when I stepped in the door and started preaching, I remember saying to the church then, if you want a Baptist preacher, a Baptist pastor, do not vote for me. Vote no. I'm not saying I'm, I'm against Baptists. I'm saying to you, I'm for the kingdom of God. I'm going to preach the truth, period. If all you're looking for is just a Baptist preacher, then do not vote for me. I try everything I could to not come here. I ain't going to lie to you. Because I knew what it was going to be like. And I really didn't want to have to go through all the battles. Your flesh don't want to. You know it, right? But I knew God was opening up a door. And if the doors open up, you just go through them and see. And if God wants to close that door, hallelujah, he'll close it. Sometimes you rejoice in that, sometimes you don't. Right? Let's get real with it. That day, voted, got 97, 98% of the vote. And I mean, it was just amazing to watch. So I knew, okay, this is God's will, and here sets the process. And then God brings in Steve. It was a whole process of things that had to happen and all the way through of breaking curses, that kind of thing. But the whole point is, that can't happen if you're not allowing God's wisdom and knowledge to come from justification and sanctification in the spirit realm into your life and start changing who you are and what you're supposed to say, how you're supposed to say it, when you're supposed to say it. And I'm still going through that process right now. I hope you are too. <laughs> Amen? You can't go off what you see. You got to go off spirit. Amen? Can we stand to our feet? I hope you got something out of this teaching. I know this in closing, God's will is for you to, for you to grow in His grace. Amen. And you can't do it on your own. But it's up to you. I do know this though. Everybody in this room has a, has a, a will from God for your life. Are you fulfilling it? I don't know. That's between you and God. I have to ask God the same question about myself every day. If you're here today, today, and you need to be born again, I can't save you, but I know who can. If you hear the Spirit of God drawing you, saying you need this Jesus Christ, and this is the day, the time of salvation. Now, if you are here today and you have been born again, thank God for that. But if you need to be healed, 
are set free, delivered from anything, by obedience, by faith, come, we'll pray with you. What's your need today? There's nothing too big for God. He's just waiting for you. What's your need? thank you guys for coming today. I hope you got something out of this. If not, that's okay. I always preach to myself. I always say that, I always tell you that. And I do. Seriously. Um, when we get ready to leave here, please y'all stay and eat and fellowship with each other. Talk to some folks you know, that you might not know all about. Most things in our lives that, 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 that can actually help you. Amen. So talk to some folks. Stay and eat with us. Thomas, you might close in prayer.